The competition's spicing up so much that AMD's making a really odd move right here. NVIDIA finally slightly unveils the thing that we've maybe been waiting for. And you want anti-scalper legislation pushed through Cogvermint? Well, do ya? I don't know, let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off talking about the new CPUs that were expected to come out from AMD. And no, I'm not talking about the 3D vCache chips that we're expecting to supersede what we currently have with the Ryzen 5000 series. Instead, what this is, is the Renoir X CPUs, which is gonna go back to the 4000 series, cut out the iGPU, and then serve it up to you as a fresh plate of new chips, at least according to a new report over on the chip hell forums saying that that is going to be one of amd's launch strategies going forward as well as the fact that we're going to get vermeer s on with zen 3d cache and then also next year we're supposed to be getting Raphael. but the big one that's coming out here is the fact that renoir x is being released as a competition to what we're expecting to be intel's lower end chips namely the i3s that we're expecting them to release sometime in january or february this is a really intriguing move considering the fact that AMD hasn't released a Ryzen 3 chip to the consumer for a really long time. They technically released the 3100 and 3300X, but as anybody who actually tried to buy those chips knows, they weren't mass available for hardly anybody for the longest time. You were able to buy a few 3300Xs a little earlier this year for right around MSRP, but that was kind of it for something that launched well over a year ago, but it does look like they might be anticipating some pressure on the lower end segment from Intel, especially if these benchmarks are to be believed, because now we have details coming out about the i3-12100, including some benchmarks. So this is going to be Intel's lowest end Alder Lake chip that we're expecting. Four cores, eight threads, does not have the hybrid architecture, only has the performance cores, and it's just supposed to be a little fast boy. And if we take a look at the PC Mark score submitted here, you can see that the 12100 beats the 3100 and the 3300X handedly in essentially everything. And then if we take a look at Cinebench R23, the same is true there, both in multi-core and single core score. And if Intel chooses to release this for roughly the same price as what we have the 10100 for, that's gonna be a $100 chip that's beating out what AMD's $100 chips were that they never actually really released to the entire consumer base. You can tell me they existed, but it took me a year to buy one, so I don't believe you. I personally am excited for this. I think this has been Intel's strength in the consumer market for the past two years as they've been losing the gaming performance crown to AMD and making not a whole lot of sense in the i7 and i9 region. They've been making a ton of sense when it comes to their 10100 and their 10400s. Their lower end chips have always been the bread and butter that I've seen that they've been giving as value to the consumers. And everybody has been kind of arguing about Ryzen 7 versus i9 and i7, but really Intel has been doing really good stuff for the consumer, whereas AMD's just completely, in my opinion, abandoned this market segment. So seeing that they're going to compete with Intel by releasing APUs that are cut down and don't have integrated GPUs in order to compete with Intel tells me, number one, they're not taking this market segment seriously. If they're not gonna release some sort of Zen 3 architecture Ryzen 3 chip, the only thing we have is the 5300G and they're not releasing that to consumers. And then number two, I think it just looks like they're okay with doing stuff to look good in the eyes of the consumer, but then not doing things that are good for the average consumer. And so I, I, I hold this against AMD. The fact that they won't release lower end chips and they won't actually give us really good low end chips and Intel's the one who's been kind of saving us here. But what do you think of Ryzen 3 versus Intel i3? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And while you're Typing that, why don't you hear about today's video sponsor? My friends, today's video is sponsored by Ho. Now, as I've gotten older, I've realized that my body doesn't work the way that it used to. I have lower energy than ever before, and my body creaks in new places. Do you know it hurts sometimes just to stand up? Man, my 30s has been as wild as I was told they were gonna be. But as your body gets older, as things change, that's 
where hone comes in because they're a comprehensive hormone optimization clinic that helps men get back their energy, their focus, their libido, and their muscle mass by addressing a key factor that does affect a lot of men, which is low testosterone. Hone offers at-home biomarker testing, in-depth physician video consults, and FDA-approved medication delivered straight to your door. And since it's launched in 2020, Hone has helped thousands of men. Even though I'm in my early 30s, I still have three young kids that I need to take care of and I wanna spend most of my time with and be at their energy level. And as I've gotten older, it's been harder to keep that up. So I'm trying to, to make sure that I address all of the areas that could potentially be holding me back as a husband and a father, whether that be hormone inefficiencies, my diet, et cetera, which is why I'm excited to partner with Hone for today's video. Currently, 30 million men in the US have low testosterone that's affecting their daily lives. And testosterone's more than just a sex hormone. Optimizing your testosterone can lead to increased energy, increased muscle mass, more focus, and a better overall mood. And Hone helps men get tested and treatment for low testosterone with real physicians, real science, and real FDA approved methods of treatment. And the best way to know if you need to optimize your testosterone levels is to get tested. Hone allows you to do that from the comfort of your own home. You can order Hone's easy to use at home assessment test today to learn your testosterone levels. And for a limited time, only viewers can get the at home testing and a doctor consultation for only $45. So you can click the link in the video description or go to honehealth.com forward slash UFD to take advantage now. Big thanks to Hone for sponsoring today's video. Now let's talk about NVIDIA and the RTX 2060 12 gig. We've been talking about how this has been rumored to come out. The launch date's supposed to be December 7th. That is the alleged time frame, but now they've officially unveiled it to us in a driver update. In the latest 497.09 drivers, they have confirmed that the RTX 2060 12 gig is real and that this driver unlocks support for that. So it's coming. We just don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know how, we just know that NVIDIA is coming like a choo-choo train. And if in case you want to share pictures of you coming and going on your Xbox, you can now do that because Xbox gamers will be able to share game clips via public links in a new way of doing it that they didn't have before. So people can see you do your 360 rotoscopes on Halo, right? I know video games. But in case you're an Xbox fanboy and you want to be part of testing new features, they're actually rolling it out so that you can apply to be an alpha tester currently. Their alpha or alpha skip ahead ring are now accepting applications to potentially be considered to the invite only uh, beta testing, alpha testing program. Why would I say beta testing? It's just, that's a turn of phrase. Anyways, I'm gonna turn this phrase into talking about how Titanfall is now being retired. Just the original one, not Titanfall 2, but Respawn tweeting out that Titanfall is always gonna be part of Respawn's DNA, but they're not gonna run it and you can't buy it anymore. They don't want people playing it anymore as of March 21st, 2022. They're not shutting down the server. So if you're still a diehard Titanfall person, good for you, but you won't be able to acquire it anymore or find it anymore on subscription services, to which I say, ah, bummer. But you know what lifts my spirits when I'm in a bummer? UFD deals, my friends. Let's talk about some of the hottest tech deals that I found on the internet right now for you. We've got this Seasonic Prime TX 850, 80 plus titanium, 850 watt power supply. Absolutely immaculate. 12 year warranty going for $137.49 after a $25 rebate. The $162 normal price is actually really good. And then getting that extra $25 rebate card makes it a really sweet deal. Then we also have IDE cooling with their Oraflow X360 AIO cooler going for only $70. It's going to be available until the end of the month in case you're looking to pick that up. We also have a pretty good deal on a decently spec Chromebook, the HP 11 inch touchscreen Chromebook, whatever you want to call it. It's only going for $349 compared to its original $599, but this is actually a relatively good deal in case you need a Chromebook. And in case you need a microphone, the Blue Yeti X professional wired condenser microphone is only going for $100, which I know might sound like it's not a deal, but this is the Yeti X version. So this is the higher end one, and it's normally going for $170, as you can see by the black color one here. This is the World of Warcraft edition gray version. So if you're okay with the color scheme, you're getting a heckin' screaming good deal right there. And then if you need some storage, Best Buy's eBay page has this one terabyte MX500 SSD for only $85, which again, pretty decent deal in case you wanna mount your monitor. This mount up single monitor desk mount, it's going for roughly $17 after you clip that 40% off coupon, which is not a bad price for a freestanding monitor arm. And in case you have an iPad Pro and an iPad Air, you can now get the smart keyboard folio for it for only $99 over on Amazon and 
and all of the links for everything I mentioned today in UFD deals will be linked in the video description, all affiliate links, small kickback to me, but I'm providing you the hottest deals that I can find. So hopefully you enjoy that. But you know what people aren't enjoying right now is the crypto meme stonks market. Let's get into the crypto stonks. Bitcoin down just a little bit, down to 56,921. It's under half a percent lower, but Ethereum's 1% lower to be at 45,85. Dogecoin down 3.5% to 20 cents. However, the meme stonks got sliced up with the katana, all right? They've been just, somebody took a, a, a freaking potato peeler and just started whacking away skin. GameStop down 8% right now. It's slightly before close as I'm filming, but $180 is where it's sitting. AMC, however, brutally down 15% to be at $28. Where's your meme god now, friends, huh? Save you from the stunks, all right? Well, let's talk about Elon Musk for a second, I suppose. Tesla sold a 50 dollar cyber truck whistle for you to blow the whistle on tesla as elon musk put it which is just he also then mocked the 20 dollar apple polishing cloth and then said that this you can get a Cybertruck whistle, it's sold out. So whoever wanted that meme could pick it up already. And if you want this meme, Barnes and Noble is updating their. <sighs> I talk for so fast, so long, I ran out of breath. Barnes and Noble is updating its Nook Glowlight e-reader. Now the fourth generation is gonna have USB-C for the first time ever and going up to 32 gigs of storage. It's gonna sell for $150 as of December 8th, which is a little pricey, but in case you want Barnes and Noble, instead of supporting a mega conglomeration like Amazon, you could do that. And in case you want to support the mega conglomeration that's Spotify, this doesn't segue well, but Spotify's 2021 wrapped now details all of the stuff that you listen to in 2021. I got mine and I realized I have a problem in that I need to separate my work from my personal listening because my number one artist was Stream Beats by Harris Heller. And I can tell you, I not once listened to that for personal enjoyment. My number one artist outside of that was Good Kid. Totally enjoyed them. But in case you want to get your Spotify 2021 wrapped, you can only do that on the mobile application. It's not available on the web like it has been in previous years. So you gotta you gotta load up your phone, friends, like a Neanderthal. And have you been manually banning people on Twitch like some sort of Neanderthal? Well, Twitch is here to bring AI and machine learning to help you get rid of banned people who are trying to circumvent bans. I, I don't know how it's machine learning, but trust me, Twitch says that it is, and it's dubbed the suspicious user detection in which they'll flag individuals in chat who they suspect of potentially being trying to skirt a ban that you've already given them. This is in counteracting some of the hate raids that were happening on Twitch earlier, but it doesn't actually ban this new person. It just shows you that they hid the message and this is this is why they're they're hiding it because they might be based on IP and a bunch of other stuff. Machine learning things, things that I can't learn because Brett human, Brett no machine, no glip glorp, okay? So this is obviously beyond my level of understanding. Twitch bringing it out to hopefully alleviate and combat some people who are trying to skirt the rules, which is what Congress is doing, all right? I don't typically bring up politics here on Hot News, so I want us to have a conversation about this, but only in the realm of like the technical sides of what this law would mean, rather than motive and, you know, just uh, how one side's bad and the other side's bad and if you're not on my side, I hate your anus, none of that kind of stuff, all right? Just let's debate the merits of the bill, which is them trying to stop things like GPUs being bought up from by bots. The, I'm gonna say this is terrible, the Stopping Grinch Bots Act, that's awful. I mean, even the acronym, it's SCABA. You could have come up with something way better. Stopping Grinch Bots Act anyways, they're calling them Grinch Bots, the bots that actually buy up all the stuff because they buy up whole inventories of popular holiday toys and resell them to parents at high prices. Won't somebody please think of the children? Anyways, it's being introduced in the Senate for them to potentially do this. And if found out that you are using a bot in order to do this, you would then be sued by the FTC with the punishment not being fully made clear at this point or how they would know that you've done this. It likely might have to be on the retailer to report this to the FTC. This isn't the first time that this has been introduced. It was introduced the first time back in 2018, then again in 2019. Now it's being brought up here in 2021. Obviously, I do think that right now it is a bit more of a uh, cultural problem than it was back in 2018 and 2019. It was happening, but not to the extent that we are seeing it happening ever since, you know, the 30 series. I, I think that was 
almost the catalyst, at least when I was paying attention, the 30 series launching and then not being available was like the domino that fell. Anyways, there's a lot of questions that come around here. Number one, uh, who has the burden of proving that it was a bot? Is it on the retailer to do this? And would retailers even have an incentive to do this? Because if they sold out of their stock, they sold out of their stock. It's still good for business, baby. Why would they necessarily want to report that? Number two, what constitutes as a bot and what constitutes as an abuse of this privilege, right? Is it a bot for me to have something that allows me to go through and get to checkout and so that I can buy one? Am I then at risk of being a Grinch bot? Is that, am I a Grinch bot because I used something to help me get to checkout because I knew I was competing against other bots? Is there some sort of arms race that's going on here? And then I guess it does partially come down to the, you know, what's the punishment? Is there actually enough power being implemented by the FTC to dissuade people from doing it, such as if it's a fine, right? Like, let's say you have to pay $100 for every instance. I'm just making up numbers here for every instance that you actually get found out. As long as you make $150, it's still like you're still making a profit on this as long as it's a fine and not any other sort of punishment like potentially jail time wouldn't it just create this arms race where they're only doing it on high value products that they know that they can make enough profit uh, on in order to pay off the ftc i don't know i'm just spitballing here have that conversation again civilly down below in the comments while I tell you about this civil aspect of the companies that potentially might be causing some of this problem, which is miners and AMD's new mining GPUs being brought to you by Sapphire. The X080 and the X060 based on RDNA 2 architecture coming out, costing between 550 and 750 euro for either a 41 mega hash per second GPU or 30 mega hash per second GPU, the X060 doing that 30 mega hash per second, which if I recall correctly, it's roughly the hashing rate of a GTX 1070, which means that a 1070 like GPU, obviously maybe a little bit more efficient based on the fact that it's Navi 22, costs 550 euro. And that just hurts. That hurts me right in my pants. Why did I say that? That doesn't even make sense. Like in my upper thigh. I have, a, I have a cramp in my quad now, thanks to this. That's exactly what just happened. Oh boy, before I say anything else that I regret, I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News there. See you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends, to close out the week.